Mankind and animals have been closely linked since the dawn of time, although at that stage it was more of a survival relationship than anything else. Today we look at 22 unlikely friendships in the animal kingdom. Number 22, best friends forever. First up, let's meet Pocho. He's the most loyal, loving, faithful, and friendly pet you'll come across. The only difference, Pocho is a crocodile. He's 16 feet long, weighs roughly a ton, and loves his good friend Gilberto Shedden. In 1991, Pocho was found by Shedden with a bullet hole inside of him. Shedden bravely nursed the croc back to good health. After he released him, the croc kept returning to his home, and the two have maintained their unusual friendship ever since. Number 21, Unbreakable Bond. Speaking of unusual friendships, isn't it bizarre to see a massive elephant and a small dog so happy in each other's company? This is Bubbles. She's an African elephant, and her companion, Bella, is a black lab. Bubbles was rescued from ivory poachers, and Bella had been abandoned. These kindred spirits connected, and their friendship is as strong as ever. Number 20, Part of the Family. Although the story of Tippy is rather an old one, it's still one of the most surreal. Tippy's parents were wildlife photographers from France who moved to Namibia for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to photograph the wildlife there. During their time, they captured the most breathtaking shots of their daughter interacting with the animals. In fact, it would put the Jungle Book to shame. Tippy is now 26 years old, living in Paris and working in film. Number 19, bond that's hard to break. It must be their long necks that initially attracted this unlikely duo. Bia is a giraffe and Wilma is an ostrich, and they met when they were both living at Bush Gardens in the US. They live in a 65-acre enclosure, so there's plenty of space for them to interact with their own kind, but they chose to be together. You can say it, I know I want to. Oh. Number 18, gone but not forgotten. Canada is our next stop where we meet Bailey the Buffalo. Abandoned by his mom as a baby, he was hand reared by Jim and Linda Sautner. They used to call him the gentle giant, and even though he did spend the majority of the time outside, he loved to squeeze into the living room and relax with his human family. Bailey suffered from an unfortunate accident where he got trapped in the bars of a metal feeder. He was freed as quickly as possible, but suffered pressure to his heart and lungs and sadly didn't make it. Number 17, BFFs. It's not often that a stray cat wanders into a cage of an Asian black bear, and you would think that either the cat would be frightened off pretty quickly or it would end up as lunch. But that wasn't the case when Mushi the cat enter Mozzie the bear's cage. The two connected instantly, and years down the line, they're still as close as ever. They share meals, play, sleep, and cuddle together daily. Number 16, Bear Hug. Back in 2002, Casey Anderson was in the woods somewhere in Alaska when he came upon bear cubs anxiously sitting next to their deceased mother. He couldn't bear, see what we did there, the thought of leaving them, so he took the two cubs home. One didn't make it, but the other one has been in the family ever since. His name is Brutus, and he even made the most dashing best man when Casey tied the knot. Number 15, find your tribe. Tinny is a sniffer dog, and Sniffer is a wild fox. Never in a million years would you think the pair would be friends, but they are. They met in the forests of Norway, and Tinny's owner has the most beautiful photographs of the unlikely pair playing in the woods. Number 14, Lion's Pride. This unnamed woman probably gave many people near heart failure when they initially saw the reunion between herself and a rescued African lion on TV. As you're watching, you see the lion bounding up to her, and it looks like he's about to hurt her, except the unthinkable happens, and he grasps her in the most amazing hug you'll ever witness. The brave woman found the lion when he was starving to death, and she nursed him back to health. Some reports say the lion went to a sanctuary, while others say that he went to a zoo, hopefully the former. But it's pretty clear that he remembers his lifesaver, and the reunion is definitely worth a mention. Number 13, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. Are we off to walk down the yellow brick road? Not quite, but we are off to Georgia. There was a raid on a suspected narcotics dealer's home, and there, not only did they find what they were looking for, but they also discovered a lion, tiger, and bear cub, all two months old. They were taken to Noah's Ark Animal Rescue Center, and staff decided to keep them together. Many years later, the trio are still together and bring loads of joy to people who come to visit them. Number 12, Thick as Thieves. Torque and Shrek, a friendship between dog and an owl that has blossomed over time. Shrek the owl was just a chick when six-month-old Torque adopted him and became his dear friend. Shrek was taken from her mother's care because they feared the mother might eat him as she was rather stressed out at the time. This does happen quite often with birds and their young. The last update was a number of years ago, so hopefully both are still good mates. 
Number 11, Bird's Eye View. When you hear of the story about Cameron Bloom, his family, and a little orphaned bird, you'll automatically assume the family rescued the little bird. However, the family firmly believed that the bird saved their lives. The baby bird, named Penguin, was found by Cameron's son, Noah. At around the same time, Sam, the mom, was coming to terms with her paralysis diagnosis after a terrible accident. They believed that Penguin gave their family hope and helped them heal emotionally. Being a photographer, Cameron was able to capture the most exquisite images of his family with Penguin. And in June of 2017, it was confirmed that Naomi Watts would star in a movie all about him. Make sure you have loads of tissues handy when you go to see it. Number 10, Fish Tales. A fish named Falstaff and a dog named Chino had an instant connection. They met when Chino's family, Dan and Mary Heath, moved to a house in Medford with a pond in the back garden. Falstaff was a 15-inch orange and black koi that lived in that pond. Every day, Chino headed to the pond, and every day, Falstaff would come up to the surface and greet him. Number 9. Keeping it in the family this is Christian the Lion, who was born in captivity in 1969. He was literally sold right out of Herod's store and bought by John Rendell and Anthony Ace Bork. The men brought the lion back to their London abode, but as the lion grew bigger, so they needed bigger premises. The bigger the lion got, the more they realized that they couldn't care for him in London anymore. So they got hold of George Adamson, who helped them reintroduce Christian into the wild in Africa. When they went to visit the lion after a year, they were warned that the chances of the lion remembering them would be slim. But to their amazement, the lion recognized them instantly. Number eight, puppy love. This is Mabel the chicken and her puppies. Well, technically they're not really hers, obviously, but they may as well be. Mabel had a foot injury, which saw her moving into her owner's home. When the family dog had puppies, Mabel took it upon herself to keep them warm when the puppy's mom preferred being out in the yard. You could call her a real mother hen. Number seven, leader of the pack. Sean Ellis is the founder of Wolfpack Management at Combe Martin Wildlife Park in Devon, England. In 2005, he spent nearly two years living in captivity with three abandoned wolf pups who were privately owned. Through knowledge of wolf behavior, he became the alpha male and had their allegiance. He spent most of his life interacting with wolves and has learned to communicate with scent and sound, also in wolves' natural habitats on other continents. His wish is to see wolves reintroduced to England, where they were last seen in the wild in the 17th century. Number six, unlikely bedfellows. Snakes eat rodents, period, right? Not in this case. Starting in 2005 in Tokyo's Mutsuguro Animal Kingdom, Gohan-chan the hamster and Ao-chan the snake were bosom buddies. Ao-chan lost his appetite one day, or actually one month because, you know, he's a snake, and the supplier was fresh out of frozen mice. It was thought that live prey might stimulate his appetite. However, the snake took no interest in the hamster, and they became one of the main attractions at the institution, living together. I wonder how Gohan-chan felt seeing his friend eating other rodents, though. By the way, Gohan means rice or meal in Japanese. Number 5. Barely Unbelievable Meet Mark Duma, a bear trainer based in British Columbia, Canada. He's been in the animal training business for close to 45 years and has an 800-pound polar bear as a pet. You know, as people do. He adopted Aggie from an overcrowded zoo when she was eight weeks old. They play, swim, and even nap together, like a cat nap, except it's a bear nap. Mark is quick to point out that Aggie is friendly and gentle towards him and his wife, but not to those she doesn't know. We'll stay clear. Number four, the main thing is we're friends. Bone Digger the Lion was discovered to be suffering from a metabolic bone disease that left the poor chap partially disabled. Enter Milo, the 11-pound dachshund who thought a massive cat would make a good friend. That's one brave dog. Two other dachshunds have joined in on the act, Bullet and Angel. Three dachshunds and a lion. Who would have thought? Number three, Ohana means family. Now before we go on, bear in mind, hippos kill more people in Africa than crocodiles, lions, and other dangerous game put together. Jessica the hippo lives with Tony Jube in South Africa. It's not that unusual for hippos to be seen in the KwaZulu-Natal province in South Africa, especially after heavy flooding. She was rescued and adopted by the Joubert's. They live on an open property, so Jessica is free to roam and visit other hippos, but always returns home. Number two, King Louis and his pal. In a rare and endangered species reserve in the US, a rare friendship has blossomed. Roscoe, the blue tick hound, followed Saria and his handlers home one day. Saria the orangutan has never been happier since meeting Roscoe, and the feeling appears to be mutual. They swim together, walk together, groom each other, but I guess they don't climb trees together. Number one, everybody's best friend. If this is 100% real, then we would definitely pay a lot of money to encounter this. This friendly shark has been used to promote shark diving in the Farallon Islands and seems to have a fondness for human interaction. Looks like he's a regular Bruce. Just ask Nemo. 